I'm QRS and Terry with Redox, and today I'm here with a very special guest. We have John Bass, who is known as the healthcare blockchain expert. The cool thing about John is he's also the founder and CEO, right? Yeah. Of Hashed Health. So tell us a little bit about Hashed Health and just blockchain in general to the people that may not know about it. Maybe uh, some context would be good. I I've got a background as a um, in three different startups, all healthcare technology focused. So. 22 years of experience trying to get healthcare constituents to collaborate around, you know, how to deliver care more effectively and more efficiently. That sounds like a, it, an experience. It, oh God, it takes years <laughs> off your life. I mean, yeah. there's a reason I don't have a lot of hair. It is, it is really hard, um, and we've, you know, over time we've built up all these really complex value chains and really kind of heavy systems around which we deliver care and pay for that delivery and process claims and get drugs to people and you know all of these kind of different value chains that are responsible for delivering care or a product to a consumer over time have just gotten really heavy and full of friction. And so my career has been dedicated to creating kind of these ecosystems of shared value. How do we use the internet? Back in the early 2000s we had a company called in impacthealth.com that was using the internet to manage transactions between hospitals and, and suppliers. Mm -hmm. So um, for the first time ever, hospitals and their part business partners were sitting at a table trying to figure out how do we collaborate around data? How do we share information? How do we use the internet to move transactions back and forth? And, and just to put this into some context, like what time period was this? This was in the 99, early 2000s. Okay. It's probably when you were in like grammar school. So. Uh, <laughs> So, so that was the first startup. Yeah. So um, that did well. We sold it to a company called Metabuy and then GHX. And then we moved on to a company called Impact Health, not sorry, InVivoLink. Okay. And InVivoLink was focused on care management. How do we get all of the people involved in an episode of care to work together, kind of put a software wrapper around an episode so that the surgeon in their office and the manufacturer and the hospital and the post key provider are all working together around delivering care effectively and efficiently as the patient moves through that episode or that continuum across all those constituents. So again, how do we collaborate? How do we create a shared operating system? How do we create an ecosystem of kind of shared value where all those, all those constituents win by participating and the patient wins because better care is delivered at a lower cost? So. That brings us to the blockchain. So I left, uh, we sold uh, InVivoLink to HCA about two years ago. Congrats. That's Thank you. Two times. Uh, yeah, so then, so um, right around the time we did that, I really fell in love with blockchain. What was fin the FinTech and financial services industry doing with the technology? They were moving currencies without a middleman. They were streamlining back end, kind of these complex, uh, inefficient back office processes. And with my experience in healthcare, I immediately started kind of coming up with use cases around, wow, we could use that for claims. That's just, instead of a cryptocurrency, you're, you're, you're taking that principle of a digital asset and you're applying it to a medical claim or a, um, a medical record or a supply chain product moving through a supply chain or a patient moving through an episode of care. Those are all examples of an asset moving through a, a value chain mm -hmm. that the, uh, the blockchain can really help us streamline that and make it more effective and efficient. Because look, we're, we're, in, we're in trouble here. I mean, healthcare is a mess. You know, it, it's a $3.5 trillion industry. We're heading towards $5 trillion by 2022. It, it's like 20% of GDP. It's not sustainable. And like, what are we going to do? We need a fundamentally new conversation totally. around how to control the cost. And so that's what Hashtelf was designed to do. We want to take these principles of blockchain and distributed ledger and then work with collaborators in the industry, work with the thought leaders at companies and entrepreneurs and people like Redox to create these ecosystems of shared value where we're all building new healthcare solutions on top of a more sustainable infrastructure. Okay. So I get that, I understand it, yeah. but explain it to me like I'm five. Like, what is the product of Hashed Health for someone yeah. that might not be as familiar with blockchain? Yeah, so when we started the company, we were trying to figure out, okay, you know, I basically started with all these use cases. I was right. like, all right, what use case can I build and sell? 
And I quickly realized that's not how it works in blockchain. It's a network. Yes. It's as much about the network as it is about the product. Yes. And without the network, it's just an expensive academic exercise, right? Yeah. So, and we knew that the, the marketplace in healthcare, this was a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. so they didn't know what blockchain was. Right. They needed to be educated, they needed to be organized, we needed to find the thought leaders that we could collaborate with to start building. Yes. Ultimately, Hashed Health wants to be a products company. Okay. But right now, the market is still in a very nascent stage and it demands consulting, it demands education, it demands thought leadership, totally. and it demands simple demonstrations of value. How do we create simple products that solve simple use cases? Now, with the value proposition in the short term, as we build the foundational structure for the more long-term, more disruptive um, opportunities that are in five to ten years out. So that's kind of what Hash Health, it's, it's really about creating a market, about introducing blockchain to healthcare constituents, getting them on board, helping them understand what it means to their strategy, and then developing solutions collaboratively with like a minimally viable product inside a minimally viable network that streamlines the movement from concept to commercialization. Totally. So, what's super interesting about all of this is you've been at the front lines of educating healthcare executives and, and clinicians, probably providers, um, about the benefits of an application like blockchain. Have you seen anything that has come from the front lines that is like, okay, blockchain might be implemented in healthcare in the next two to three years in this case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, that's what we do. You know, we, people honestly, I think are most attracted to Hashed because we're healthcare veterans, we understand the technology really deeply, and we're able to come up with simple demonstrations of value that solve a problem. So, I'll give you an example. State of Illinois, we did a big press release two weeks ago. Okay. State of Illinois is now one of our uh, partners, members, customers, whatever you want to call Congrats. it. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, and they're a very thought leading, you know, state um, enterprise. They have a lot of different uh, opportunities and digitization priorities. Mm -hmm. um, a very unsexy but very costly problem that they have is around credentialing of physicians, licensure of physicians, um, basically, how do we uh, attest that a physician has a license in the state of Illinois in good standing? So that they can practice. So they can practice and get paid for treating patients. Got it. So, believe it or not, that is a hard, you know, apparently a hard problem to solve, and there's lots of manual processes around the, the licensure and the attestation, the primary source verification and attestation uh, that uh, uh, someone's license is in good standing. And so, providers, payers are all asking over and over to the state of Illinois, is this guy licensed? Is this doctor, is she licensed? You know, what's the status of this license? And, you know, the, a licensure is just one element of amongst a bunch. And it's inefficient, the current process. That's right. Yeah. And it's not portable. You know, it doesn't travel between states and right. physicians practice. Between. So we're creating a decentralized shared ledger that allows a state or a college or university to issue a credential and have that live in a basically a physician's wallet identity. Um, that solves a problem in today's marketplace because we reduce all the manual processes around licensure and licensure portability. And it also creates a foundational structure for these future reputation, physician identity products that are gonna be important for future blockchain-based markets. That's actually an amazing use case. I, I, I very much respect that. So, one thing that I know, if we don't touch on in our in our time here, it, people are going to have questions and doubts. Is the ICO market? What is your thought on ICOs and in, in the entire space in general around that right now? Well, I think the ICOs are one of the most exciting and also one of the most uh, exciting, I'd say, and. Uh, to some people concerning yeah. uh, and you know lots of questions but listen I mean what an amazing way to raise money for an entrepreneur and what an amazing way to fund an open source project that in the past was really difficult to fund okay. um, so 
I, I think it's a trend that's here to stay. There's lots of regulatory questions around it. You know, FinCEN and the SEC have recently started talking a bit yep. about um, how they're going to handle ICOs. But, man, uh, as a CEO of a, of a blockchain company, and I would say any other person in the space is thinking the same thing, is you got to pay attention and you, you got to, in some ways, be attracted to it for those reasons. It's, you know, it's liquid, it's a community-focused rather than investor-focused um, fundraising model. Uh, you know, there's no, uh, you know, it's immediately liquid, yeah. even for the VCs. They like it because they can invest and immediately sell that investment or trade it. Yeah. Um, so it's immediately liquid. You're not waiting for a liquidity event. Yeah. Um, and, you know, probably most importantly, it, it is going, it could help fund a lot of the important consumer focused work that may not get funded by the establishment in today's healthcare marketplace. Um, and so for those reasons and a few others that I left out, I think it's a really interesting space. I think we're, you know, we're smart to pay attention to it. And um, yeah, we're gonna, you're gonna be watching it really closely. It's amazing. Well, thank you for your time, sir. Yeah. This was a wonderful conversation. Where can people find out more about Hash? Uh, well, you can find us online, our website, hashedhealth.com, uh, at on Twitter, at John G. Bass, uh, or at Hashed Health. Um, and we've got a big conference coming up in September, the Distributed Health Conference here in Nashville. is the world's largest blockchain healthcare conference, and we're co-hosting that with uh, BTC Media and Change Healthcare. Um, so that's a great opportunity to come and learn more. Um, yeah, and now's the time to get involved. So thanks for, your, thanks for really letting me on. That was awesome. Yeah, Thank you. thanks.